Right, Road Dog. It's Swarm from Chips, actually. Let's just clarify. I've Sponsored got... by our friends at Interco Specialist Steels and Alloys. You know what they do? They do. They make they make special steels and alloys. I'm they not sure they make it. But well, they, they don't make it. They stock 17 million pounds worth of stock. Wow. And they do hard steels. Not as hard as that hill, I'll but tell harder you what, steels. My cars, I was feeling the burn there. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, <laughs> we were revisiting DP Engineering. You might recognise that entrance from last time where we did Challenge Annika. I've How long ago was that, Colin? Challenge Annick was a long time ago. Me being out of breath is right now. We visited here about three years ago. Chris, give us some action. Was that a yes three years ago? There you go. I tried to play to out Rowan. Hold on. He's out of breath what? now. Give him a second. Give him a Challenge second. Challenge Annika was, and he didn't get it. Poor lad. Anyway, we need to go around 10 minutes. It's under strict times. DP Engineering, fantastic machine shop, aerospace and all sorts. Look at all the stock, all the components. They've got to manage all this. How do they do it? How do they do it? PSL Data Track. Okay, and how so does that work for them? Controls the, the stock materials in here, controls everything as it runs through the shop floor, all the work in progress to finished parts going out. Work order in, or customer invoice, customer quote in, uh, work order invoice out. Right from the very beginning, so 26 modules, you buy one, you can buy one or you can buy all. Generally people buy one, two, three or four and then build up from there. They can build it, get it off the shelf or build it bespoke. These guys have been using it since the late 90s and it's essential to their machine shop to keep it, all this running smoothly. So right from initial invoice, as I said, to final, no, an initial quotation, if I get that right, through to final invoice. But quality data in, gives them quality data out, and there we have it. Right, let's go and see some machines. It's not just about controlling software. It's not just about machines, but we're going to find that out. Let's go this way. I'm getting a vibe. They do like a hard engine machine. They do. So the Bridgeport XR1000 and also the 5 axis. So these guys have got mostly it's hide and hide controls, which I've used before at previous previous company, hard, uh, hard and hard controls, really easy to use, program online, offline, whether you're doing five axis indexing or even on the XR1000, just doing standard three axis milling, they're solid workhorses of machine. Two things I noticed about this machine. I, can I use the word behemoth? Yeah, behemoth, yeah. No, you say to. behemoth, I say potato, <laughs> you say potato. It is a massive, massive five axis. Absolutely machine. huge. The, 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 the bed on the five axis, it must be about a di uh, almost a meter in diameter. Okay, get the amount of parts that they could fit on. Right now, unfortunately, they're doing a small part on it. But the size of the parts they could fit on this, if they needed to do big aerospace, maybe impellers or turbine rings or casings, anything like that would be absolutely perfect for this machine. Okay, and the doors open up, you can get really good access into there then you need to load it on something, work holding solution. Exactly, so they use uh, a lot of chick work holding here, so they've got a one lock vice on this yeah, machine. Yeah. Lucky I got the safety oh, guys, yeah, there you got go. the rifle there. You've got a one lock vice on this machine, which is a chick, chick work holding is all about operator ergonomics. So the chick has got, it's got, uh, rather than a machine vice, it's got a big flat bits. there's no horrible little gouges that you can, that swarf gets into. It's really no swarf to get ingress out. in a simple. No swarf ingress, easy to change the soft jaws, uh, hard jaws. And they've also got some chick tombstones we're going to well, go and we'll look at a little, a little we don't, we don't, Well, that's a little reveal. We'll come to that later. But one of the latest acquisitions, I think we should go this way. Yep. So we're going to see the Mats new Matsura. So they've had this in six months, I think, Colin. I think we need to be standing here because we have, I am photogenic, as are you, Rowan. What is this machine? What is it, how has it helped the guys here? So the, the classic MX330, we see this all up and down the country. It's uh, got a fantastic spindle, five axis, but it's, it's, it's a great precision 5 axis machine in and of itself, notwithstanding the, the ten massive 10 pallets you can fit on it as well. So it's already a good machine, but adding 10 pallets for the high productivity. And here they've got Lang uh, base plates, pyramidal work holding, with Lang uh, stamping jaws, stamping dice as well. They've I'll got three what, times 10, 30 pallets. And Lang's doing this on purpose, because everywhere I go, I see Lang work holding solution. Three stamped on how many millimeters? Uh, three millimeters. Uh, so, uh, and what, what accuracy? Uh, five micron peak stability. Oh, not that good. Oh, ten micron. Ten micron. Oh. But the gentleman who's running this loves it because he can take the work holding, he can machine it, take it over to the CMM over there. He can take it over there, then put it back in the machine, lose no accuracy whatsoever. So he thinks it's absolutely brilliant. Rim. Rim. So it's called remote intelligence monitoring. I'll just Thank you very much for just throwing that at me, Colin. I appreciate that. So <laughs> The good thing about this machine is you can run this with 10 pallets times three, 30 parts. You can probably run it over the weekend depending on the cycle times, but it's all well and good going and pressing the green button, going home and hoping that it's working. Yeah. What you want to know is you want to know that it's working over that weekend. With remote intelligence monitoring, you can check it with your phone, check it online, on your oh, PC, okay. laptop. 
So you oh, know where I'll tell you, you are. Look at that. Remote intelligence machine monitoring. Oh, there really? we go. It's almost like I know what I'm talking about. Oh, and it's almost like we prepared this earlier, but we wouldn't do that. This is a drop in quick 10 minute tour. Exactly. So, anyway, so you know this machine is running weekends, it's making you money while you're maybe sat on the beach. Well, or, or windsurfing or surfing, because we're in Red Roof. So exactly. Sunny anyway. Cornwall. Oh, absolutely. We're going to go and have passive, but we want to pass sooner rather than later. So, Chris, come on. It's a 10 minute tour. We're going this way, my friend. Yeah, come on, this keep way. up, Chris. Come on. Please. Walk this way. Loads more hard inch. Hard inch, hard inch, hard inch, hard inch. Hard inch, hard inch. Oh, did, how many how is that? I don't know, is that seven? Oh, I can't, I've lost track. We see Rowan's had a bath, not very pleasant <laughs> for anybody involved. Lovely. But I suppose at least he's had a bath. Nice. So, anyway, so lots of hard inch machines. They love going for the same manufacturers that they can trust because they can swap parts out, their operators know how to use them, so it makes a lot of sense. You're looking that way, but I've seen two very good things here. First oh. of all, uh, what's this? Mr. So Jeunesse some, from Microlock. Microlock work holding here, which is really good for lots of different types of parts you can but set up on a single hold on, base. Hold on. That's the clamp, because you'll have a big table, won't you? Yes, so we've not seen, I don't know where the base plates are, I can't see any here. I guess the grip what plates so, are probably on the machine. What is so good about Microlock? It, so so the, the, the wedge design, you get fantastic clamping force even just with nice flat uh, flat jaws, so you don't damage your part, but you get really good clamping force. And also, the uh, the modularity of it, so you've got little tiny wedge clamps here, you have bigger clamps as well, so you can fit lots of different parts on a single grid plate and do them all at once. Easy to use? Easy to use, yeah, you just slide them on the little T-slot, slide them in, everyone uses a T-slot, stick the little cross, um, cross locators in, so that's all about your location accuracy as okay. well. Okay, so great, great solution. Next work holding solution, we've already mentioned Chick, but this, is a tombstone from Chick, we just say here. But what's going on? I mean, just the, the basics, you know, what's going on with this? And So what I love about Chick, again, it's all about the operator ergonomics. So big plate, swarf, oh, no swarf ingress, you don't have to clean that out. And again, these little wedges, you've got a single Allen key. Uh, you need to no, work your camera, you, right, you need to work you your camera, man. Yeah, sorry, hello. Go on, Chris. <laughs> so I think to, to take this big, beautiful soft jaw off, you've got to just undo uh, the Allen key at the top here, come straight off, it's easy to change because it's gone on the days of manual machining where you have to sit there, turn wind in the handles to make the part. The, the, the operator intensive part of the process now is work setting, tool setting. So this is all about making sure the work setting is easy and as quick as possible so you're making money and keeping those machines yeah, running. No point, yeah, no point having a super efficient machine that's going to run 24 7 and then spending two hours cleaning that and loading it all. You could do it super quick. Exactly. So I said in 10 seconds what I said in 10 minutes there. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, I'm joking. I'm right? trying, I'm but trying. Now, this is our latest acquisition, acquisition, if I can say acquisition, the sliding head section, not the sliding head section, but this machine here, it's a Citizen M32 Type 8. I They've mean, look at it, what a beautiful machine. Yes, and well, over the other side is the old M32. This is an upgrade. So what have they upgraded? Well, shall I tell you? Yeah, go on then, Colin, what have okay, they got? Okay, so first of all, oh, they've got the turret on here, which is, you know, you think side, you're not thinking turret, but huge, huge turret there. And you can have tooling front and back, you can see, there, you're working on the sub spit on the sub spindle. If you can get around here, Chris, you see you'll see driven tooling on the front end as well. So means a lot more complex components. Y axis on the main and the sub spindle again, more accurate. Oh, more and also simultaneous components. on the B axis oh, on the front. Oh, I'm doing this story. All right, wow, all right. It's really my thunder. So B axis, fully simultaneous driven tooling. You know what that means? More complex parts. More complex parts. But they've also thought about. It's great having this machine. It's got you know can make some fantastic components, but you've got to keep it running, keep it loaded. Big bar feed, that end, and then... I am good classic. Nice touchscreen control, huge touchscreen control. The, the engineers love it, and then moving back, Chris, go on, get back, go, Chris, you're in my way, you're in my way. Big, big door, you know, you've got this fantastic machine, but just a little thing, you can get in there, you can set it, and also when it's closed, you can see in there, see what's going Again, on. Again, it's all about making sure it's easy for the operator. I mean, look at the size. Look at the size of the area you can see in there. It's all about the ergonomics. Absolutely. So they, there you have that. That's the M32 Type 8, making some fantastic machine. And also the back end there, swarm conveyor, your parts catchers. So you can run these things 24-7. Now, we visited these guys a little while ago. They've got an old Citizen there, which I think is about 15 years old, still going strong. But they replaced it, or not replaced it, they've got a newer version here, the L20 Type 10. And look who's been here. Well, it's what we've been here before. Oh, yeah, three, that's a three-year-old magnet, that is. It is. But in here, again, you're very compact, main sub-spindle, working away, LFE technology. A great example of the work they're doing on this. On the old machine, they're turning apart. They could do 250 per session. They were peel turning, but they had to do it slowly because of the swarf build-up. Popped it on here. LFE generally, not all the time, Cycle times don't change that much or can go up a little bit, but you're going to get better tool life, better surface finish, and no swarf ingress because 
no bird's nest. But with this, it brought the cycle time down on the peel turning. So they're now making a thousand components per session. So massive improvement in cycle time for that job. And you know what the phrase is? I don't know what is the phrase. Application specific, my friend. Application specific. You yeah, love it. Yeah, love it. Right now, I think we should do turning heads or fixed heads. Sure, Let's look go at the, yeah, the two So they've got two Nakamuras here with uh, short bar feeders, which is we do like to see a good long bar feeder, but there's nothing wrong with a short bar feeder on a fixed head. Lay there's the Colin. Sorry, I was actually counting. They've got another Nakamura over there, so three. So oh, you're so telling three? Okay, they've got three. Lies, bro. So oh. they bought one, and what do they say they liked about it? So much they've got two. And three. And three. Yes, absolutely. What do they like about it? I mean, just looking there, big, fast, powerful, big chunks of metal. I, I'm going to put a question out to people. Is, I can't open the door. Oh, door unlocked. There you go. Hey, Let's hope we don't go. Go. Wait, so you insured to do before. that? Uh, no. Oh, so they're doing some hexagonal bar right now, which is quite cool. If you have a quick look at How that. How many sizes has that got? It's got five. <laughs> five. You're checking me out now. There's a video where, where Paul's trying to figure out what Pentagon is. Oh, you're joking. We're here. Oh, oh, we're nearly 10 minutes up, so chop, chop. No, so, no Pentagon is five. Hexagon is six. Oh, right. Okay, <laughs> right. Anyway, we, di we digest. Why, generally, fixed head lays generally have short bar feeds. Why is that? So, with, with I th well, fixed head lays have a short bar feeder because it takes up less space. Yeah, but... but Sliding heads have a long bar feeder because you have to have a long bar feeder with the with the sliding head. You don't have to have a long bar feeder with a fixed head. So people normally opt for the short bar feeders. Okay. So if you talk to uh, Colin, no, I'm yeah, Colin. Colin. No, Colin from uh, First MTA. He's he's got a whole uh, monologue Why? he tells you about this, about how you should really put a long bar feeder on a fixed head lathe as well because you've got less on the remnants, less cost on the remnants, less cost on having to cut down the bar as well. So really. We like a short bar feeder, but a long bar feeder is better on a fixed head as well. Okay. Well, that's application specific. And Clive, it, sorry, it's I'll Clive. I just said Clive about two yeah, minutes ago. Oh, sorry. sorry. There right, we go. come on, moving on. <laughs> moving on. We've got ten minutes. We've already overrun, and I know our editors are going to be going bonkers. Beachy. Well, no, actually, oh. just quickly back there, you're going to have to do a long distance shot. Those screens, PSL day track. They've got these on every workstation. No paper. They could do their works orders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Pictures up there. All on screen, and they're saving the environment. So, what about a status board as well? Status is that like a status board? Status, status wow. board. Wow. And what is a big bottleneck in machine tool, machine shops? Definitely, it's going to be inspection. Okay. We spoke to Phil from DP Engineering earlier, and he said this has been an absolute godsend. You could tell me more about it, Rowan. So. I said inspection, sometimes it's machining if your machines aren't optimized, but these guys know exactly what they're doing when it comes to machining. Then they looked at the, all the parts they were pumping out from the sliding head lathes, and it was taking ages to inspect. You've got to sit there with a vernier, a depth mic, a it's plug all about, gauge. It's all about the visuals, Ryan. Oh yeah, sorry, let's check this out. So, but and quite a lot of the parts they're doing, they noticed the aerospace parts, the turn parts, were all external features. So what's perfect for external features is definitely optical inspection. So this can do something like, I think it's like, I don't know, 40 features a second. and. Uh, Phil was saying, I mean, look at the number of features you've got on, on this part here. He said, this does all of this in under a second. I mean, if you imagine you tried to measure all of these diameters, Colin, it'd take you like a day, wouldn't it? Oh, it, yeah, that just turned the machine on. <laughs> so saving them absolutely, well, ages in time. That's not very technical, but loads and loads of time saving, stopping that bottleneck, keeping the machine shop running. That is, well, we, we've broken a rule. I think we're up to about 14 minutes. I do apologize, but fantastic machine shop. Anything you'd like to add? I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm impressed by these guys. I love the different kinds of turning, milling, sliding head, fixed head. Normally people have that one specialty yep. and do that one thing really well and maybe do some other things. But it seems like these guys kind of are specialists in fixed head, in sliding head and in milling as well. There you go. I'm going to stop you there. Two more things to say. First of all, thank you to our sponsors, Les and the team at Interco. What do they do? They do special steels and alloys, Absolutely. 17 million pounds worth of stock. They're based in Cheltenham. They've got loads of stock. Most suppliers have, have not been buying in the past two years. These guys have still been buying even with all the difficult conditions. So check out Interco for all your special steels and, and alloys. And I said two things. That was one. The second thing is, as we're in Cornwall, I'm off for a pasty. See you later. I hope I'm, you enjoyed the show. I'm off for a surf. <laughs>